And hello, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. We are today talking to James Hugh, who is your digital marketing ally. And everything we want to know today about Google Analytics, he will try to do that, but I think it's a really big subject. So today we're going to be talking about a bit uh, analytics, uh, how, where to look for the information and how to move around there. And James is going to also take us some of the points like the key features that we need to look into Google Analytics. So hi, James. Hi. How are you today? Yeah, good, yeah, thank you. you, good. Are you in Cambridge, by the way? Yeah, just, just north of Cambridge. Okay. Yeah, nice. So let's get started. I think you'd like to share your slides or if you would like to say anything before we start, go ahead. Um, I'll mention maybe now that uh, whoever is watching us today, um, please feel free to ask your questions during the presentation and James will try to take some uh, breaks in between to answer them. Uh, otherwise, we will have Q&A in the end of the session. So. Yeah, go ahead, Dean. Great, sure. Brilliant, there we go. So yeah, here's um, kind of a business founder's intro into Google Analytics and how you can use some of those mighty metrics to kind of aid you in running your business and, and growing your campaigns and the way you're acquiring you know, users who hopefully become customers on your website. T today, I, I want you to try and learn and as we said at the beginning, it's a big topic, so maybe we'll scratch the surface and follow up later or dig into the questions as we go or at the end. But I want to kind of introduce you how to set up the tracking on your website, have a look at those kind of key features um, that you might be using in Google Analytics, um, how you can track goals. I mean, what we want people to do stuff when we come to our website, we call those kind of goals and we can track them and I'll show you a bit about that. And let's find out a bit more about how these people are coming to our website. Let's let's tag them. Let's, you know, if we've got campaigns or, or other ways of, of sending traffic, we want to understand more about how they came to our website and what they did. So how we can tag, tag those. And plus a little bit about, you know, viewing some dashboards that you can use to review your performance as you go along. So tracking. One of the, when you're setting up your Google Analytics account, um, when you go to the admin and then uh, account and uh, the property, there's a section where you can get the, the tracking codes put on your website. Um, the most important part being kind of your tracking ID number. Um, you can use this within the code, as you can see on the screen there, that you can place on your website. Uh, and a caveat, um, Google Analytics recently released a new version back in October, Google Analytics 4. Um, so I'll be flipping between the two different platforms a little bit throughout the presentation. Uh, so this is the, the old version where you get that, that code. And then here's Google Analytics 4. Uh, they call things slightly different. They, they set things up as kind of website streams. So the idea is that you can have um, a stream of data coming in from your website or maybe a stream of data coming in from your, your, your application. Um, but again, you can fill in your website name there. And then what you do is, again, you can get your, your measurement ID from this stream data once you've set it up. So there's a couple of different popular web platforms. Um, you know, one of them is, is WordPress. I imagine a lot of people on this call use WordPress or something similar. One of the easiest ways to add this Google Analytics tracking to your website is probably with a plugin. Uh, one of the popular with millions of downloads is this Monster Insights. And what that'll do is when you install it on WordPress, it will guide you through a process and it will need that measurement ID uh, that we just looked at um, from within Google Analytics. If you're using perhaps a, a Wix website, you can go to the marketing integration section um, and then there's a prompt to uh, connect to Google Analytics. What it will do is probably ask you to um, you know, sign into your Google account and then it will join, join the two together and sort that out and paste in your Google Analytics ID. 
and then you know because it's cloud hosted it's Wix, they'll, they'll sort of care of all the me mechanics of getting the code on the page for you and again it's a similar process if you're a, if you're a squarespace user um you know you just give them the the analytics id number they worry about all the code um if you're interested in other ways of, of adding code to your website be that kind of editing your wordpress theme or you know using tools like google tag manager you know re reach out or you know i can pass you some resources on the internet there's some other you know ways of doing it which can get a bit more complex maybe but you know i think if, you, if you're just starting out, the best thing to do is use a plugin, or if you've got a cloud-hosted service, you know, just pop the code in using their, their tools. So once we've installed the, the, the tracking code, um, let's have a look at the key features, unless we've got any questions around tagging, adding the tags to the website. I can hold on a second. Some of the other things you can do with tags, you know, getting advanced is you can use it to kind of capture your e-commerce data, like your revenue. Um, and, you know, using tools like Tag Manager, you can capture, uh, you know, custom events and things. Or as you saw, you know, back here, you know, with the newest version of Google Analytics, it can automatically detect some of the kind of custom things like site search and video engagement for you. So there's no need to add extra tags. Um, you know, technology's come on quite a bit since 12 years ago when I started doing this. Um, so let's talk about the key features once we get into Google Analytics. Um, they're kind of bucketed into these main, four major topics. So you've got your kind of audience and user data telling you you know, about the people on your site. Um, if you want to know, you know, what kind of technology they're using, are they on a phone? Are they using Chrome or Microsoft Edge web browser? Where are they in the world? If we want to learn more about them, that's within the audience section or in the new analytics that are called users. Um, how did we acquire these people? How did they come to the website? Um, you find that under acquisition. That can show you like your campaigns and your traffic sources. And then you've got your behavior or engagement on the new version, which will tell you, well, where did they go on my website? What did they do when they were here? Um, what did they get up to? What are the most popular pages? Um, and then lastly, um, you know, in terms of these top key features, we've got the conversions and the monetization. This is where we can view our goals how many people have successfully done the things we want them to do on the website? And also, you know, monetization or kind of e-commerce tracking. Are they, you know, how many sales are we getting? If we've connected that data together, you know, we can see like products and revenue and then track that back to acquisition sources and it all gets very exciting. So audience and users. So what we have here is the view of the audiences, so we can see, you know, how many users have come to the site, how many of them are new. Um, you know, that's quite a useful thing to check. Uh, you see there on the pie chart on the right-hand side, we can see what percentage are new and returning visitors. Now, depending on your website, um, you know, these stats may change slightly. Um, we can also see kind of the language uh, and breakdown of the country and, um, you know, how many pages per session, their bounce rate. Some of these are getting into kind of behavior, but, you know, people ask, you know, uh, is, should I be worried about bounce rate, time on site, number of pages? I, you've got to all take it with, with a lot of context. Um, you know, if you're driving someone to a, a, a blog page and they come along and they read the blog and then they leave, maybe that's fine that they bounce. Um, so, you know, but as a site-wide thing, you know, it's a, it's a health, you know, healthy to just monitor how these metrics are all doing, especially if you're making a major change to your website. Have you gone and, you know, broken something, thrown something around, uh, changed the way users interact with it? Uh, but this is where you can kind of see demographics about them. One thing I do like about this, and I still find people forgetting it, is, is learning, is, you know, is looking at those stats of, well, what kind of device are my users on? Are they on a mobile? Are they on a desktop? So many people sit here, you know, building their websites on desktops and then forget to check that, you know, in this case, 66% of people were viewing it on a mobile. Did you stop? Did you look at your website on a mobile? Was it easy to use? And here you can see, 
you know, metrics around bounce rate and pages per sessions based by device. And you could quickly learn, well, are people finding it easy to use my site on a mobile? So this is one of the top ones I like looking at, along with technology, when I'm kind of debugging and, and understanding how, what my users they're using or, or where they might be, you know, hitting pinch points. So how do we acquire these users? This is one of the, you know, my favorite reports. It's the source uh, medium report. And this can give you a breakdown of all the different places where you're getting traffic from and then extra data around how they interacted on the website. Um, it can give you an idea in terms of, you know, especially from your social media, where they're coming from. So, you, you know, you might be a small business and thinking, why do I need to look at Google Analytics? I'm just doing my social media. You could use this. To understand well, where I'm actually, which social channel I'm actually driving people to my website from. Oh, I'm getting a lot of people from Facebook. Maybe I should do more work on Facebook and and just forget about Pinterest because I'm not getting too many from that. Or it could be the other way around. Equally, it's great for discovering you know traffic sources you may never, you may not be aware of. So you can see here number three on the chart for this website. They've got uh, a link and some traffic coming through from you know shopsmalloveindie.co.uk. Now, if they hadn't, you know, maybe they didn't put that partnership in place and they didn't know that existed, they could then go, oh, I'm getting eight visitors from that. Maybe I could get more. Maybe I should reach out to that website and see if we can collaborate and do some more stuff together and they could feature me more or run some ads. Um, you know, you can discover traffic sources and then hopefully try and grow them by looking at this report. And in the new version of Google Analytics 4, they've spruced it up a bit, put some nice charts, but essentially, um, you know, you've got that source medium uh, kind of view where you can see where people are coming from. So what do they do when they get there? How do they engage with your site? So you can see an overview of kind of the top pages that people are looking at. And again, there's bounce and exit and page time on site. Um, this is great if you're, you know, you want to understand the top pages people are looking at. This one, it's an e-commerce site. Most people are looking at the shop. Uh, you know, maybe this could inspire you to do a bit more work on your blog and get more people there. Or equally, you can see 16 people viewed the contact page. And you might be like, well, 16 people didn't contact me. How can I make it easier for people to contact me? They're getting to that page. They're not picking up the phone. They're not filling out a form. Geez, I better do something about that. And you can find that kind of information here within the behavior report. Now, what would be even better is if we track those people who contacted us or we track those sales that came through the e-commerce website. So this is the kind of conversion section where we can track um, the different ways people have kind of engage with the website to, to do the things we want to do. Um, yeah, this is fine. So here, what I'm showing is um, the goals that were completed for this website within kind of February, March time. And I can see, you know, we've got like 100, and, 100 or so, 150 so there. But even better, what you can do with the date picker at the top right there is compare it to a previous time. So you can be like, well, am I doing better than last year? So here we've compared February this year to February last year, and like, oh yeah, we're doing good. We're we're doing better than what we did last year. You know, this is a, a seasonal business, and and maybe the weather was better now than it was last year. Um, and we can see, you know, what rate people are converting. You know, out of a hundred visitors, how many are are turning into you know, doing this goal that we want to, you know, what percentage of them are, are doing that. And it looks like we're, we're even converting at a better rate. It's not just a volume thing, which is great. And if you happen to be, you know, selling e-commerce, if you can sell things online, if you can sell some blue, green, yellow widgets, um, you can, you know, some of these cloud systems like Wix and, and Squarespace, they can, you know, join up the dots uh, and some of the plugins will do that for you as well um, to feed that e-commerce data into analytics. So 
maybe it's easier for you to see that information analytics or share it with you know a marketing consultant rather than them having to you know dig around in your e-commerce shop what's even better is this data is then you know applied into other places so we can see it by medium we can see it by you know users and growth over time as we can see here and our conversion rate you know which is quite you know a useful thing to keep track of are we turning enough people into customers, which products are selling the most and how many of them. And you can find that under the kind of e-commerce section. But let's have a look at how we can set those up. Let's take the example of a, a simple, you know, one page website where you will have a contact form and you want to you know, track when people fill out that form. So, what you can do here is, in the old version of analytics, um, you would go to kind of account, then into the property. So the way it's lay, laid out in the old version um, is you have accounts, and then accounts can have kind of multiple properties. They may be your websites. Um, and then your properties could have a view, um, you know, where you can present different types of data. And within that view, you might have to want to define the goals you want to track. So you go in and you'd create a new goal. And then it gives you loads of lovely um, templates on how you can do that, or you can select custom down the bottom. This just helps provide you with the right ways to input the data and uh, you know, bucket the goals together. So let's say we're doing a contact form. So what we do is we give, it, we give a goal a name, define it as, as goal one. Um, and, and the easiest way is to have kind of a, a thank you page after your form. Um, there are other ways of doing it. So let's say if you, were, you know, one of the other ways, if you're using kind of Google Tag Manager, you can use a, um, you know, fire off a, an event that would say when this form is submitted, uh, it's got form ID, contact us, when submitted, you know, trigger an event. Or the, you know, the, the simple way that has been used for years is, you know, you send people to a thank you page and you say, right, what is that thank you page? So I've gone back into my you know, site content area. I've used the, in the top right there, I've searched for the word thank. And I can see, yep, it's called thank you hyphen, thank hyphen you hyphen page. Um, and then loads of stuff on the end because it's an e-commerce site. Um, and it's that's just the way it's set up at the moment. So if I wanted to capture that, I'd I'd want to kind of only trigger this goal when people reach a page that begins with the words thank hyphen you hyphen page. Um, there are options to you know do ends with or to do Kind of a regular expression but in this example we just want pages that begin with thank you so we go and put that in there and then at the bottom just before the save there's a kind of a verify this this link so kind of verify this goal so you can kind of test what what be the conversion rate with this goal and you can see here when i hit that button it's saying it's you know just under a one percent conversion rate that feels about right for this website so that's fine i'm happy to kind of save that. So now we can track those goals that we saw back in the, when we were looking at the, the area of the website around, around goals. And now, so we can track the goals, we know where to find things in analytics. So let's get some more visibility on the data we're sending in, the, the people we're driving from, from campaigns and other places. And the way to do this is with um, kind of a granular tracking uh, in analytics. They're kind of called UTMs. Um, and we can track kind of the source. So the source might be um, something like Google or your newsletter, or in this case, Instagram. We can track the, the medium which they came to us by. Was it uh, via an email? Did they come by a cost per click campaign? Uh, was it a banner we placed on a website? Then we can name the campaign. So we give it something we, we understand what it is and you know, make sense to us. 
So maybe if I was promoting this talk and running some ads, I, I might call this the, the Google Analytics talk campaign. And then you can have an option to enter kind of campaign terms. Now in a, a search campaign, that would be kind of like the keywords or the, the search queries that you're showing up for. But in this kind of context of social media, I could put in maybe like the, the ad group or the targeting name. So here I've Let's say I want to target who, people who viewed my website in the last 30 days. So I've called it viewed the website last 30 days. And then let's give even more detail so I can really understand what's going on. And, you know, that advert or um, kind of social media post, let's give that a content, a piece of a name. So I know when that comes through, that's the one that drove the traffic. And in this handy tool, uh, the link is here. If you search for kind of Google Analytics, um, UTM tagging, there's a link in the slide as well, uh, URL, campaign URL builder, you can see at the bottom, it's gone and generated you this tracking URL string with all that, that tracking on the end. You've probably been on many websites around the internet and click things and seen really long strings in the address bar. Well, it's this is what it's for. So when you get into analytics, you can understand where people have come from. So you could, well, let's pause. Maybe there's questions. So we can track things. We've done some campaign tracking, set up some UTMs. We can now view those in our different reports. And we have, Hi, <laughs> hello. Yeah, we do actually have questions, and uh, a few of them is are from me. <laughs> that's fine. So I wasn't speaking fast <laughs> enough to, to skip the questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, so the first question was, I think, from a little no before that. So Victoria asked, "What is the reasonable bounce rate?" And do you know what to tweak if it's high? Sure. Uh, so, like I said, I think. Context is really important. If you if you were driving people to a landing page from a campaign and there was only one thing they could do on it, um, and that one thing was fill out a form, and you know for your business it would be great if ten percent of people filled out that form and the you know and that would give you enough you know inquiries, then you might have a ninety percent bounce rate and you probably wouldn't mind because the goal of the page is to do one thing. Whereas if you were looking at your homepage or your wider site and you saw a 90% bounce rate and people were, you know, there's loads of links in your navigation and people weren't clicking on them and going around, you'd be like, oh, I gave people lots of options and they still bounced. So it's really important to understand that context. You know, are you sending them to a blog but you don't mind if they read and leave? Are you sending them to a landing page or are you looking at the whole site? Uh, I see bounce rates for like a whole website somewhere between the region of kind of 30 and 60% um it is kind of for a general website you know and that's quite a wide range i appreciate um but if it's outside that range is it a is it a landing page of some kind if it's really low like five or five percent or below ten percent is your maybe your tracking's broken and you're you know double firing um or you've got some really engaging things on the page um that people are doing and how could you improve it well yeah you could you know, if, if, if your goal is to get people to not bounce and to go deeper into the site, give them options and try and convince them to take up those options and go in and, and browse around the website uh, would be my advice there. Yeah. James, I actually have a question here just to get your point because there's a bit of controversy around bounce rate and exit page. Yes. So is the bounce rate literally when no one does anything or so is crawling for example part of what makes the page have been viewed or not because if someone is just reading a blog right so they scrolled on the page they didn't click anything but then they exited is this a bounce rate i think in most cases yes i'd have to check um i know you can I, I, i'd have to check in, in the new version analytics but i know in the old one people would maybe add kind of custom event code that would say has scrolled you know whatever percentage right. depth in a page and then they'd yeah. add those as events in google analytics 
Um, yeah. And then there's, again, this again gets a bit more complex. There's, there's two types of yeah. events. You can have events that do and don't count towards bounce rates. You can have events that are just there to measure things, or you can yeah. set up events that say, no, they did something engaging on the page, which is you know just as good as going to view another page. So yeah, you know, don't count that as a bounce. Uh, exactly. you know, let's say you've got like a, a 3D uh, product viewing tool, so people can you know you know swizzle, swizzle your product around and view it in 3D. They might do that, and that's quite engaging with the page, and then they left. But in all intents and purposes, they they did something quite engaging with your site. So you might want not want to count that as a bounce. Uh, yeah. I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah, it helps. So it is only possible to know if it was like basically to disregard the bounce rate if we have a tag manager or a tagging kind of system to understand that there has been an engagement without any actual click, right? We need that tagging and triggering. You do, or it looks like in the new version of Google Analytics, they, they take care of some of that for you. So they'll, okay. it kind of, it knows if someone's hit play on a video. It knows, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's it's doing some of that work for you, but always, you know, and I, and I believe they've removed bounce rate from a new version of, of analytics as well, or, right. or at least the word bounce rate. There's, you know, you've right. got to use these metrics. You know, this is why when I was looking at some of those previous screens, it's like, so what's the time on site and the bounce rate and the number of pages viewed? I'm kind of looking at all those metrics together to to paint a picture rather than you know one on its on its own as such. Right, good, thanks. Um, another question from Lillian. So she said some of the features available on Squarespace are the, are the same as uh, the key features in Google Analytics. Are they not as accurate or is it important to do both? Right, yeah. I haven't used Squarespace much at all really, um, but I know a lot of web platforms have their own kind of reporting and dashboards and things like that and i guess that's what you're talking about is you know there's probably some kind of reporting metrics in in squarespace and yeah they're probably pretty good uh i know when i've used a few um i know wordpress comes with one um i always end up getting getting to a point where i'm like oh i wish i knew that and it's and it's not there but it would would be in google analytics so i i found over the years that you know external um tools like google analytics or if you work in enterprise you know things like adobe um analytics and stuff like that often have more metrics than you know the built-in ones in your content management system so if you if you want to dig a bit deeper it's, it's always worth kind of adding things like google analytics um it can just give you that extra bit of um insight sometimes Actually, so not only uh, Squarespace. I use Wix, but the idea is about accurate information. And so I've been finding discrepancy even by using MailChimp, like the report I get from MailChimp for my email letter and the re like the numbers I get from Google Analytics. So I always say, like, let's just take them with a pinch of salt, you know? Um, and just, yeah, they're all going to track things slightly differently. The technology is going to yeah. be slightly different. But, you know, the key thing to do is if you are reporting regularly, don't switch between platforms. Don't go this week, this month, right. I'm going to report from, right. from Squarespace metrics. And then in two months time, I'm going to switch to Google Analytics because then you can't compare like for like. Right. Um, yeah. And then when you're dealing with small numbers, you know, it can really, you know, skew things. Oh, did I get 10 or did I get 11 visitors last yeah. month? Yeah. Uh, you know, and it can yeah. really become quite apparent. Um, so, yeah, just be consistent on which tool you're using. They're, they're all going to have different flaws and accuracies. So just pick yeah. one, stick with it. Um, none of these things are going to be perfect. There's always going to yeah. be bots that might skew your stats or, you know, people doing weird things. Um, none yeah. of these no, that's a good. Yeah, true. That's a good point. There was a question actually from me about when you said about the thank you page. So one of the websites I'm reporting on, for example, they don't actually have a thank you page that people go to. So basically the slug, there is no slug thank you uh, page. Yeah. So is it necessary, absolutely necessary, if you want to set up a goal for that one to create a thank you page or is it pop-up? Uh, 
will do. No, it's not. I mean, that's quite an old and simplistic way. If I'm if I'm critical of myself for presenting it that way, there are, you know, so. I, I would um, I haven't used it enough yet, but the new looking at the kind of the new analytics, it seems to be pretty good at capturing when events happen. So I would right. not be surprised if it can capture when a form is completed and capture that event because I know you can do that in Google Tag Manager. In Google Tag Manager, which is um, you know, so if you've got lots of different codes you need to put on your website, Google Analytics, Facebook, Pinterest tags. You would use a tag manager, and, and Google does one to, to put all of those on. And you can trigger events for when you want to trigger different codes. Uh, and one of those ways of triggering it is to say, when the form that has the ID value of contact us is submitted, so someone clicks that button, trigger uh, trigger these tracking codes, and that that might include a Google Analytics event. Your you know, Google Ads conversion pixel or your Pinterest conversion pixel yeah, um, or whatever else. Um, so Tag Manager is a, an easy way to do that. Um, and, and probably in the new version of Analytics, they're, they're capturing those events. So you just then need to, you know, when the goal, uh, you know, instead of defining a goal on a URL, you would define it on, a, on an event in Analytics. And I can I can share some of that later uh, to follow up. Right. No, thank you. I think it was also a matter of because this website doesn't have a tag manager. Uh, but enough about that. So yeah, go ahead and continue your presentations. And yeah, keep the questions coming, guys. And uh, uh, we will be taking breaks to take them later. So now we've got all this information. We've tagged it. We've set our goals. Let's try and present it uh, in a way that means something to us. So in the current analytics, you can go to kind of customizations and dashboards and create a dashboard there. Um, and my mouse is on the wrong bit. There we go. And what that can give us is quite a, a quick and simplistic dashboard where you can view some stats. They'll give you kind of predefined templates, um, and you can present the information you want and then kind of edit it as you need. And you can drag in different kind of metrics. And there's lots of different templates you can use as well. What Google will probably be pushing you more towards as well is using their external product uh, called Data Studio, which is kind of a one-stop shop for you know presenting uh, data. So when you hit kind of Google Data Studio, there's options for kind of templates uh, and different uh, dashboards. This is one of the quick um, Google Analytics ones. And you can see it's kind of presented all the you know, quick key information you might need to see uh, around your website and your business kind of all in one place. Um, and if we wanted, you, know, you can edit these different modules. They're all different um, kind of components of the dashboard. Um, and there's loads of great templates out there to kind of get you started on, on Google Tag Manager and equally within analytics um, to import those in. What I find, you know, has been the most successful when working with teams is, you know, to have a dashboard of some kind, even if you're just taking screenshots out of analytics or, you know, building one of these uh, dashboards and, and reporting on it weekly or monthly, uh, you know, just always looking at those stats, um, you know, what gets, you know, you're measuring it, you're looking at it, then you can manage it and stay on top of it. And that consistency of looking at it and a dashboard can be, a, you know, quite a useful way to do that. 
So resources, um, and I'll, I can share these slides later. We've got Google Data Studio and the URL builder we used, uh, the plugin for WordPress and how to set up the code in, in Wix. Also, um, you know, if I was to, you know, uh, Avanash, uh, he's a digital marketing evangelist from Google. He's written books like uh, Web Analytics 2.0, uh, following him on LinkedIn, joining his email newsletter, he is an absolute fountain of knowledge of, of all things analytics. If you wanted to kind of take your game to the next level, um, that would be a you know a great place to start. Is is following him uh, and what he puts out into the world. Thank you for your time. Uh, that's me. I've been doing digital marketing for twelve years now. Feel free to reach out, talk public marketing, digital marketing, analytics. Always happy to help where I can, and um, I'm sure we've got some more questions. Let's see. Actually, uh, thank you, James. So we do have uh, questions that we've received prior to yes. uh, the talk. So I'm just going to pull these out. So the first question, how can I leverage Google Analytics to optimize my internet marketing business? Yeah. So I, I think the key one there is, and that can probably apply to any business, not just an internet marketing one, is to you know monitor things like am I getting more people to my website who might become customers you know and tracking that and monitoring it where are they coming from like we looked at before and can I get more people from those sources and are they doing the kind of things I want them to do and then looking at that data you can kind of leverage it to be like ah not enough people are converting what can I do to tweak my website and get more people you know, to, you know, take up my internet marketing uh, services, um, you know, I know, take my website. Uh, oh, um, are, is anybody viewing my blog? No. Oh, maybe I need to write some different content. Oh, people, lots of people are viewing this post. Maybe I should write more of that content because people like it. So I think kind of those answering those kind of questions in analytics is, is where you can start to leverage it to optimize your, your business. Yeah. Uh, another question was, does analytics really add value to worry about for a one person business? And I think you just answered <laughs> this kind of question. It's kind of similar. Um, I mean, I can appreciate it might not be worth the effort for some people, although I think we've demonstrated the effort can be quite minimal. Um, if, if I haven't convinced you today to use Google Analytics, if you've got any kind of analytics in your content management system or somewhere, at least be looking at that regularly. Are you growing? Are, you, are things declining? You know, are you getting more people on your site? At, at the very least, be looking at that. But as we saw, you know, some of the I've scratched the surface on some of the, the, the insights you can get. So I, I would say it's it's probably up to you. I, I'd, I'd say it's it's fifty fifty. On a, on a small yeah. website, but if you've got a couple of hours to spend to just set it up and then, you know, once it's set up, you don't have to do anything else, but check it every now and then. So yes, yeah. okay, there's a little bit of work setting it up, but then it's there, yeah. it's tracking forever. And you can check back in a year's time and find out that interesting stuff that you might want to answer questions about. Yeah, um, there was there is a question here. I'm not sure though if the person is here to clarify it. But her, their question is, um, I would like to know if there are some standard analytics that could work across campaigns. Is it clear to you? Maybe I'm <laughs> not. Yeah, so I, I think what, what, what might be the answer to this question um, is that when we were setting up the, the tagging for different campaigns, I guess some common metrics that apply across different campaigns, whether they're an email, social media, you know, paid search ads is, well, how many people are they generating? Are they staying on the site a long time? Are they bouncing? Are they, are they leaving? Are they viewing lots of pages? These are all kind of common metrics that apply to different traffic sources. And then the most important one, are they doing the things they want them to do? Are they yeah. filling out the contact form? Are they completing the goals? So then when you can view that and you can compare your campaigns within your analytics, 
you know, with those goals, I, I'd call those the kind of standard analytics that you would compare across different campaigns. Um, so, so I guess the, the, the short answer is yes. Yeah. Um, there is a question also you talked slightly about it in your uh, presentation. How to do a dive a bit deeper to work my social media? Uh, would you like to add anything about that? Uh, yeah. So, um, as I, sh I showed there, it was kind of like a social media ad and I was tracking it. Um, you know, some great, uh, you know, using that UTM tool to kind of create custom tags. You know, what you could do is, um, you know, you see a lot of people are on Instagram because you can only have one link. You know, they'll use things like uh, Linktree, which is great, gives you lots of options. And then if you looked in Google Analytics, you see, wow, I'm getting loads of traffic from Linktree. What does that mean? You know, if you've used Linktree on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your Facebook, you've now lost that insight as to where they came from. So I guess one thing to kind of deep, deep dive with your social media would be is, you know, set up custom, uh, you know, linking and tracking from your different profiles or your different call to actions. So then you can see where they've come from, because sometimes otherwise, uh, you know, that can get lost. It might just be you know, if someone's come from an app and it's gone straight to your website, um, you know, that sometimes the data can get lost and, and, and it's, you know, you don't know where they've come from. It will come through as, you know, direct source or, you know, no traffic. Um, so putting kind of tracking in place can help you, you know, uncover some of that, but also not let things get, you know, lost. And if you're putting out, let's say you're promoting your blog posts and you've promoted it across different platforms, uh, you know, tagging up. Maybe you've 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 promoted it a couple of different times, and you've worded or put different pictures in the post. You could then you know track that uh, with the UTMs under the kind of the content section. You know, this might be image one, image two, video. You know, video of uh, a skyline, and and you could then understand which posts are you know are driving people through to your website and through to your blog in a bit more detail. Cool, thanks. Uh, another one is, how can I utilize free services to boost my business viewability? I think they're, they're maybe referring to for like kind of freebies and, and these kind of uh, items on websites. Yeah, maybe, or I, I was reading it maybe a slightly different way. Um, okay. You know, um, and what, what, what my first thought was, uh, you know, things like maybe Google My Business, um, I, that's a free service you can use to kind of boost your business visibility in the search results. Right. Um, but equally, yeah, you know, you could be offering free services on your website to, um, you know, increase your engagement or offering free downloads or such like, or eBooks or, you know, pieces of content. Um, yeah. But if you wanted to boost your visibility, I guess what today we've been talking about is, is, once you've put those things in place to boost your visibility, maybe uh, you know a, a directory listing or a Google My Business listing, um, social media profile. We're then today talking about how do we track whether it's working. Um, but yeah, things like Google My Business are, are a great thing to add some visibility in the search results. Uh, and again, that's another place you can add a custom kind of UTM tracking code. Because what will happen is, um, if you don't, it'll just get lumped into the Google organic. Uh, so what I did a year ago for a client was, you know, added a custom UTM code into the Google My Business, and then we discovered, wow, like thirty percent of people are coming from the Google My Business listing link. Uh, mm -hmm. I better make sure that, you know, the images in my my Google My Business profile are good, and that the wording's all up to date, and my opening hours are correct, and maybe I could put posts through my, you know, Google My Business to let people know what's going on. Um, so yes, there's free services out there that you can use to boost your visibility, and then what you want to be doing is tracking them, and then going, and then you can understand where you can reprioritize which of those three assets um, you can leverage more. And I guess it's also worth remembering that Google Analytics is free. It's it's free, yeah. so so you know when people set things up and go, oh, why isn't it showing me any stats right now? It's free. Give it a little bit of time. You know, yes, you can pay for the enterprise version of analytics if you've got the money, but this one is free. It's free because Google wants you 
to be able to manage your websites better, to make better websites, understand how people are using them and the metrics. Because if you understand your metrics, maybe you're more likely to spend money on ads and understand how the ads are working, which is their primary product. So, you know, then we'll give you this nice piece of software so you can track everything. And then you can feel yeah. confident that lots of people are coming from Google search and maybe I should put some of my money into search ads. Um, yeah. Uh, the last question from uh, the Reggie question was, how can I put tracking pixels into certain pages? I think you've talked about uh, slightly like tracking and tag manager. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, plugins uh, and tag managers is the, the easy first way to go. Um, I, if, you, if you're going to put tags um, and kind of tracking pixels, I think I would, if they're ones which are designed to be across the whole site, which Google Analytics is, I would put them across the whole site rather than just certain pages. So you can see, you know, join all the docs together around how people are using the whole website. Um, but equally, you know, tracking pixels, uh, you can get ones which are for certain pages, like we saw, like a thank you page. Uh, and there you just want to be, you know, editing the, the page source, um, viewing viewing the source within your content management system or editing the page. Um, they, they normally have lots of instructions around them. Um, so just follow those step by step. Um, and if they don't have enough instructions, a very quick Google search of WordPress with Elementor, Google conversion pixel, normally, normally, fingers crossed, um, gives you the result. Um, or equally, come into Cambridge Social Media Facebook group and just yeah. throw the question up there. I know there's lots of yeah. people in there who, who would be happy to help. That's true. Sorry, I think it's my WhatsApp this one. Uh, so let's take some of the questions we have uh, here. If we have a limited amount of time that we can dedicate to Google Analytics, what are the most important metrics we should look at? I would say the number of users that are coming to your site on a weekly, monthly basis, is that going up? Is it going down? Does it match with your seasonality of your business? Maybe you're busy at Christmas, maybe you're busy in the summer. Does it? Does it match with your expectations and track that over time? And if you've got a little bit more time, set up some kind of goals or e-commerce tracking. And are people doing enough of the things I want them to do? How many people are, are contacting me? How many? How much revenue am I generating from my site? If you, if you track nothing else, just track, track that. How many people and how many are doing the things I want them to do? Yeah. No, absolutely. I think the goals as well, setting up the goals on the website. If if you, you're you very clear on what you want them to do, maybe contact you, buy this, buy this service or download this thing. These are three goals that if you know them, you're clear on them and you set them on the website, really, that's uh, all you probably need to track if you have very limited time and you don't want to do yeah, one. Um, I don't think we have more questions here, but there are some conversations saying, and thank you, and they will look at uh, Google Analytics within and uh, saying you will look at uh, Google Analytics, see what is available. Uh, we're, say, we're seeing if there are many questions, but actually I wanted to ask about how to access the new platform because you were, you were going through it, but I think I missed how to actually go because I can see that they announced it, but I don't know how to go to it. Yeah, so at the moment you'd um, you'd set up you set it up kind of like like setting up from scratch, like a new profile. Um, so that you can't, because it's completely new technology, it also means I think like a new tracking code or a new ID. So you, when there's been previous updates, you can kind of switch between the two interfaces. Whereas I think this update's right. a bit different. So you'd literally be adding it to your website in parallel to to your existing uh, mm -hmm. analytics. Um, and then when you and, and I had to quickly add it in today because when I went to set up a new Google Analytics account, it steers you to go down the new one. Um, right. Unless at the end there's kind of there's like an option to say or use the old version, which is called Universal Analytics. So if you went to create a new analytics account, it's going to throw you down this updated version that they released in October. Um, but if you're already running analytics and you want to have a look at the new version, 
then you're going to have to go ahead and uh, kind of create a new property. So within your account, uh, wow. I think there's like an option to create a new property and it will probably steer you to create it in the in the newest newest format as such. And what do you think about it just quickly when you had the look? Um, yeah, like like the many different platform changes I've seen over the years, my head is still uh, <laughs> getting used to the new way things look, um, which yeah, is always absolutely. hard when you're flicking between new and old. Um, but I, I think some of the stuff I've seen around, like you said, like capturing these events without you having to tag your website in clever ways, um, and and some of the things where it's presenting graphs and, and different bits of data quite nicely and comparing, you know, the current yeah. versus the past um, by default, uh, it, from what I can see, was quite nice. Uh, and it, I, I think it's 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 going to future proof things a bit more yeah. as, as 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 the web evolves, as people create more apps and more different ways of complex interacting yeah, with websites true. and apps. Yeah, so what is saying that the new version doesn't work with Wix at the moment. Actually, my website is Wix, but uh, uh, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, I think we don't have more questions unless I'm missing because there are some conversations happening, but they're not really questions. I hope I'm not missing anyone. I think uh, I think uh, that's it. Yeah. So um, you we will this, there's going to be a replay and the slides can be shared as well if anyone would like them and also you can connect with uh, James after this. Uh, thank you, James, for a brilliant insight. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have anything else to add, if you would like to say anything, please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me today. Uh, it's a great community. Great. Um conferences love attending them always happy to talk digital marketing and uh if those slides are useful yeah if not um you know if there's anything a bit more detail just reach out my, my linkedin's on there uh my website uh jameshume.net um yeah just reach out and I'll, I'll see what i can do and point you in the right direction actually i i'm going to be the first one who's going to connect with you because i have lots of questions <laughs> Um, okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope this was helpful and we will see you next time. Thank you for the people who are saying thank you. I can't see names, but people are saying good stuff. James uh, and Tana, I'll be catching up soon. We don't know who is this, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you everyone and have a lovely day. And thank you so much, James. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.